purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate the DigiArt Quick Tool Building Face Paths that can be found on my website, freddyart.com. The purpose of this tool is to create detailed and perspective accurate buildings for comic book backgrounds quickly. In my how-to book, The DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics, I discuss how to create a custom building face path and how to distort it to put it into perspective to create cityscapes and skylines. And now for the first time, I'm offering a bundle of these custom building face paths. This DigiArt Quick Tool contains 30 optimized building face paths, containing a variety of building types from Gothic to Modern and Deco. Note, this tutorial has a lot of clicking around in it, but there's only a few different tools that we use. The primary ones are our Black Path Select tool. We'll be working inside of the Paths palette. We'll be stroking paths with a three pixel brush. We'll be loading selections from paths. We also use the marquee tool just so that we can move around selections without altering where the paths are. And we'll be filling paths with black. Because there's a lot of clicking around in this tutorial with different steps and different tools, I'm going to go through the process a few times. Before we can use one of these building face paths, we need to create a perspective grid and a rough layout of how you would want your cityscape to look. For more information on how to create an easy perspective grid in Adobe Photoshop, check out my free perspective path DigiArt quick tool and accompanying tutorial available on my website, freddyart.com. Once you have set up a perspective grid and have created a rough shape of how you want your building scape to look, it's time to look through the Adobe Photoshop file to find a cool building to put here in the foreground. So you want to have both your working file that has your perspective grid and your roughed out buildings open at the same time as the Photoshop file that contains the DigiArt Quick Tool building face pads. And if we go to the paths palette, you can see all 30 of the buildings individually labeled. Once you find one that you like, you just grab a hold of that path and drag it from this document into your working building scape or cityscape file. Once inside your working Photoshop document that you're creating your building scape in, I always advise to make a backup of the path that you're using so you can go back to it if you need to. Then in your toolbar, click on the black arrow path select tool. Now we're going to distort this building face path to match the perspective of our drawing. You can go to Edit, Transform, or hit Command or Control T, then right click on that path and choose Distort from the pop up menu. Small squares will appear in each of the four corners of the building. Grab a hold of those one at a time and drag around the four corners of the building to match your perspective. Then finalize the transform just by hitting enter. Here I diverge a little bit from what I taught in the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics. In that book, I simply describe stroking the path on a new layer with a size 3 pixel brush, and that still works, especially if the buildings are far in the background and they're not at an extreme perspective. But for buildings that are more in the foreground, sometimes that can have the tendency of just looking just stuck on, because there's no depth in things like the windowsills. When I first started working in this way, I would remedy that by using my brush tool in the inking stage and simply draw a shadow on the inside of each of the window panes and the window sills. But that's really laborious. To help remedy that and to speed things up, I've optimized these building face paths and I'm going to show you a shortcut, a little cheat, to create depth very quickly using these building face paths. So first, still using your black arrow path select tool, click on any part of the building that's not the window. Then make a new layer in your layers palette. And then from your toolbar, select your brush tool at a size 3 pixel brush still. Make sure you're back in your paths palette, and then look down at the bottom. There's a couple of different options. And then click on the one that says stroke path with brush tool. Now you'll have all the background detail of the building stroked on a new layer. Now again, still using your black arrow path select tool and click on the path of the outer part of the window. In the bottom of your paths palette, click on the option fill path with foreground color. We want to fill all of these windows with the color black. 
Now go back down to the bottom of your paths palette and look for the option that says load path as selection. Now once you have your selection, click off of the path that you're working on. Click anywhere in the gray area below your paths inside of your paths palette, which will hide the path that you're currently working on. Now go to your toolbar and click the marquee tool. Then go up to the menu bar and click select, then go down to modify and contract. Here I'm contracting the selection by four pixels. Note, it depends on how close your building is to the camera. Sometimes you'll need to contract the selection more or less. It depends. You'll just have to play it by ear. Once you have contracted your selection, then use the arrows on your keyboard to move down and to the right, just like two or three arrows each way. Then hit your delete key, which will delete some of the black windows that we filled earlier, and it'll create the illusion of depth. It'll create the illusion of a shadow that's on the windowsill. Now we want to repeat that process for the inner window panes. So first, deselect your selection. Now back in your paths palette, click on the building face path that we distorted earlier. And using your black arrow path select tool, and click on the inner window pane. To create a better illusion of depth here, I'm going to move this path of the inner window panes, just with my keyboard, two or three arrows down and to the right, so that it looks more like it's recessed down into the window. You'll just have to play this by ear. Again, it's all to your preference and it, it should feel intuitive. Do what feels right for your windowsill and, and the buildings that you're making. Again, we're going to fill this with black. Then click Create Selection from Path again. Click anywhere in the gray area below your paths inside of your paths palette. Then we're going to need to select the marquee tool. Then go to select, modify, contract, four pixels again. Use the arrows on your keyboard down and to the right a few times. Then hit delete on your keyboard, deleting the black that we filled in the window panes just a moment ago. This should complete your illusion of depth. Now you have a cast shadow created at the top of your windowsill, and then even further in, the window panes themselves have some depth. That's way faster than having to ink that stuff manually. Now I'm going to go back to my DigiArt Quick Tool Building Face Path Photoshop file and look for another building face to use on a second building here. All right, this one looks good. Again, grab a hold of that path and drag it over into your working document. Duplicate it just as a backup. Then using the black arrow path select tool, go to transform and then distort this path. Once I get it in place and it matches up to all my perspective grid, then finalize the transform. Use your black arrow path select tool. Click on anything that's not a window. Create a new layer in your layers palette. Go back to your paths palette. Click on the option at the bottom that says stroke path. Then use your black arrow path select tool again and click on any of the outer window paths. Click on the option fill path with foreground color. Then turn that path into a selection. Click off of the path in the paths palette. Reduce the size of that selection using contract. Select the marquee tool. Then move that selection down and to the right. Hit delete on your keyboard, deleting some of the black of the windows that we just filled and giving you the illusion of a shadow. Now the inner window panes, same thing. First, fill them with black. Convert the path to a selection. Contract. Click off your path. With the marquee tool selected, use the arrows on your keyboard down and to the right a few times. And then delete that black, again creating depth in the window panes. Now I'm going to use that same building face path for the opposite facing wall. Something to note in a situation like this is that whenever you're in your distort and lining it up to your perspective grid, you also want to make sure that stuff like the outer trim and the horizontal trim in between the rows of windows match up, line up, and correspond to those same elements on the previously existing building face path that we just established. Now that I've created this building, I'm going to make sure that I delete out anything that overlaps with the previously existing building here on the right. As you can see, you can create a pretty detailed cityscape using this technique very quickly. And the time that I save on stuff like that is, is time that I like to invest in working on my figure work and compositions and framing my shadows without having to worry about drawing a billion individual windows and windowsills. So back in our DigiArt Quick Tool Building Face Paths Photoshop file, 
you can see that I've set up all these different building face paths in the same way with anything that's not windows all combined together, then the outer windows combined, and then the inner window panes separately combined. So if you clicked on one window, it'll select them all. One window pane, it'll select them all. This is super time saving, super accurate. It's a great tool. I highly recommend it. This concludes the tutorial for the DigiArt Quick Tools Building Face Paths. Please feel free to check out my website, freddyart.com, for other tutorials and other DigiArt Quick Tool downloads.